Bird flu. You're not a bird. Does it even matter to you? Well, maybe if you like eggs, because it's causing a problem right now. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Wing. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Right. I always envision a little bird with a thermometer <laughs> out of its mouth and a coal pack on its head yeah. when I think of bird flu. Yeah. That's weird that but you have such deep I vision. I know. I just, oh, it's the first thing that comes to mind, those <laughs> poor little birds. We brought in Dr. Tom Warren, infectious disease doctor, to share with us kind of what bird flu is, why it matters to human beings. It's not a human disease. and, and just well, what, it can be human a, disease. A little bit, yes. It's not, a, it's not a big problem, but we're going to talk all about it. So start at the beginning. We're going to leave a comment. If you are interested in the bird flu or if it's affecting you and you can't get eggs on a Saturday morning, this might be why. Let's start at the beginning. Thanks for coming, Tom. Thank what you. is bird flu? So bird flu is an influenza virus okay. that primarily affects birds. Okay. It is related to influenza that infects humans. Right. Um, and we're, what we're seeing is large numbers of birds all over the world dying because of bird flu. Okay. And it can affect mammals, so it can affect uh, domestic animals um, like cows and goats. And there have been occasional cases of uh, bird flu affecting Humans. What about pets? What about your like your dog or your cat? Yeah, cats particularly. There's been a number of uh, instances throughout the world where a uh, large number of cats have been infected. Is it because of the canary connection? Like you know, the cat that eats the swallows the canary, or could be. Could yeah. be. I'm not an expert on cat influenza. <laughs> I doubt it. But not, but not dogs as much. I mean, because there are a lot of dog owners too. But dogs are less common, but not impossible. Is that That's right. Say? Yeah, it can affect a large number of mammals. Um, right. But yeah, it seems as though cats are particularly susceptible. And you said before we started filming that this is a concern for very rare bird species throughout the world, like whether it's in the Arctic or the condors of California, that it is killing significant numbers of these birds. And there's not really a good way to say, hey, birds, wash your feet. Yeah. yeah or maybe just go to the bathroom off in the corner. So it's spreading and it's a problem. It's a problem all over the world on every continent. Is it increasing? Are we seeing more bird flu in birds than we used to? Yeah, it, it ebbs and flows. It's just okay. like uh, human influenza. There can be years where it's uh, you know, fairly low and then right. uh, years where it's really high. And right now it's quite high. And the one that we talked about is most common is the H5N1. And this is like a cousin to the swine flu virus, which is H1N1, right? Yeah, that's right. So these influenza viruses are quite similar. And that's really the fear is that at this point, avian influenza is primarily affecting birds with some spillover into other mammals, but the concern is that there may be some sort of mixture and then causing more serious disease in humans. Okay, as it stands now, the H5N1, the bird flu, can it infect a human being? It can, but the rates are very low, and uh, at this point, there's not a large concern that it's going to spread, and certainly we do not see human-to-human -human transmission. So okay. the, the risk at this point is, is very low. Yeah, like one case in Canada in 2024, and I think 61 cases in the U.S., and mostly among people that are working directly with these infected birds. That's right, and it's not just birds. We have had yeah, occasional animals. cases where you know people have been infected, say, from a cow, but right. again, the risk to the human population, it's not zero, so we're looking at it closely, but it is very low. Okay, okay. So, so say you think that there's a bird or your chicken, say you're a farmer and you think that your chicken has bird flu. How are you going to know that that bird has bird flu? What, what, is it, what are the signs and the symptoms? And How the would birds? you know? Yeah, well, I mean, like, is it just you, you go to your barn and you got a bunch of dead birds? Or are they like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're a vet, right? Yeah, so that's right. No, that's a good question. I don't know, yeah. but I, I assume. <laughs> right. So, so, but we see a lot of there, there's a lot of a lot of dead birds, birds, right? A lot of dead birds. Yeah. Right. Okay. I and think then the birds mostly complaining of aches and pains. So right. Exactly. In, the, the, in the wing history. region. <laughs> in the wing region. Okay. So, so the bird obviously the farmer assesses that the birds are sick. So, what can what what do the farmers do then to try to prevent a the spread of of this bird flu to birds? I'm assuming they have to kill the birds. isolate them and then cull the birds, right? They, I think I read that up to 30 million birds have already been killed this year, culled in the United States, to deal with this because they're worried about it spreading to other farms and other animals. Yeah, that's right. It is a huge issue. And we can't control it. This is kind of the one health idea where, you know, the, the health of animals and the health of the environment affects humans. Right. Um, and so, yeah, birds uh, do sometimes need to be uh, killed to prevent transmission to other uh, flocks, to other uh, farm animals. Um, so it's it's a real problem. Did you know, interestingly, that there is a role potentially for vaccinating the birds if they've been really? if they've been if they're in a high risk area? Which yeah, I, I they do was, do some vaccination. Which is wild. Yeah. Just imagine the line of really are going to roll up in the wing, or do they? Do I, I, don't know. I didn't when look at do that deep. That okay, so we digress. Okay, but let's talk specifically. So say you're someone who enjoys chicken wings. Right. Paul Zalzal loves the chicken be, wing, or chicken breast, or eggs. 
is there any risk to human beings if they consume a bird that theoretically has the bird flu but has not shown any symptoms? No, like, as I said, the, the risk to the human population at this point is, is very low. And right. certainly there's no risk in consuming, um, you know, food uh, from uh, birds. Right. But I guess what the problem is that our, the food sources are threatened now because of the right. decreasing population. Yeah. Of and that. you just have to cook it. So if chicken sashimi was your thing, you probably should stop doing that. But if you cook it to 70 degrees Celsius or 165 mm -hmm. Fahrenheit, that mm -hmm. should be fine, even using a thermometer if you're concerned. And for an egg, the inside of the egg actually doesn't have the virus, but the shell could have the virus. So careful handling your eggs. And then once you do cook your egg, no, you can't have sunny side up anymore. You got to cook it right through. And then that fully protects you from getting the bird flu. There you go. There you go. And even if you ate it, you still might not get it. Yeah. Right? To Tom's it's, point. Yeah. Like you said, the spread to humans is very low, but the food sources are threatened, right? The food yes. supply is threatened. That's why your eggs are so expensive right now depending on when you're watching this Leave video. a comment on how much you're paying for eggs right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, so although it doesn't, uh, this, this here's a great example of an infectious disease. It doesn't directly infect humans, but still can cause a lot of harm globally or population-wise. And I think this is the fear with, with selective pressure is that like a, uh, swine flu did go to humans. And if bird flu somehow changes to a, a point where it can infect humans and is dangerous to humans, this is where global pandemics can come from, right? It can, it can change very quickly and then spread very quickly. And then we don't have an answer to it because we haven't been seeing yeah. it in humans before. Yeah, most pandemics come from animals, whether it's birds or bats. And certainly the influenza that affects humans, it, there's often a mixture in ducks and pigs. And, yeah. and the concern with, with uh, highly pathogenic avian influenza is that at some point that virus may yeah. mix with a, another virus which al then allows it to be transmitted to humans. And when you say easier. mix, you mean kind of share some genetic material that provides it with some type of advantage? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Is this what keeps you up at night? No. <laughs> He's got three daughters. Does Just it. kidding. Ew. He's like, yeah. pandemic, shmandemic. I got yeah. three kids. Yeah. You answered that quick. <laughs> that what was... is your most feared infectious disease? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Rabies, I guess. Yeah. Oh, really? I like okay. bats. Yeah. Okay. We'll do another yeah, video. Yeah, we'll definitely do a follow-up video on rabies. The thing that Dr. Warren is the most afraid of. And now I am because <laughs> yeah. you are. Thanks a lot. Same, yeah. same thing. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone that you think is interested in the bird flu or maybe it lives near a chicken farm. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. Thanks to Dr. Warren for joining us. We'll see you next time.